Try not to let this movie give you a negative view on adoption. There are wonderful kids out there who need loving homes, and the odds that they are an adult killer with dwarfism are very low, but never zero. When we're home, we should feel safe. We're always afraid of strangers coming in to do harm. But what's even scarier is when the threat comes from within. The hand that rocks a cradle made the live-in nannies look bad. Enough made us afraid of Jennifer Lopez. But what about kids? Cute, precocious, our future, ticking time bombs. This is Orphan. Kate and John are having a baby. She made the same noises nine months ago. Given the unsettling tone and horrific imagery, it's either a nightmare or they have really bad insurance. Okay, it's a nightmare, but the event is unfortunately true. Ah, Sarsgaard! After the recent stillbirth of their baby, Kate and John are giving adoption a chance. Hey, it doesn't seem so hard knock to me. Enter Esther, played by Isabel Furman. Isn't she precious? Where did you learn how to do this? Ten years in art school. What? What? And why aren't you down at the party? No open bar. What? What? We got a sucker! The first family burned to death, but let's not focus on that. We have a quota. This is an extraordinary little girl. She's very bright. She murders at a college-age level. What? What? Come on, do it. We'll waive the adoption fee and she's already spayed. We'll take her. They bring Esther home and forget that they already have two kids. Ooh, that stings. Daniel and Max, who is hearing impaired? Little backstory, Kate is a recovering alcoholic and one time she fell asleep while drunk and left Max in the car where it rolled into a pond and as a result, left her with hearing permanently damaged. How this isn't the world's most spoiled kid with that kind of guilt ammunition? Can I have a pony, mom? No, I can't hear you say no because here's your pony. Sex is interrupted and replaced with an equally awkward activity. I wanna sleep next to daddy. Uh... <laughs> Move along, people. Nothing to see here. Esther begins her first day at school in 1899. Ah. <laughs> and Daniel begins his serial killer training. Not cool, kid. It's in pain. And it's your responsibility. Not wanting the bird to suffer, Esther gently helps it transition. It's not all bird murder for Esther. She also has time for bullying. Is this a Bible? <gasps> Ripped a Bible. Ripped a Bible. How many years of bad luck is that? Oh no, I lost Andy Dufresne's hammer. Is this your collar, little doggy? Don't touch the ribbons, bitch. I found my new ringtone. Hold on a second. Yellow. Telemarketer. So, when do I learn root beer rag? Ugh. Again with the photo album. They like to capture their milestones. So what page is your obituary? What? What? Remember their stillborn child? This is their shrine. This will become significant later. Mom and dad get frisky doing the dishes. Time for a little stovetop stuffing. In the kitchen? Your children eat here! Cereal's gonna taste funny now. Esther catches Daddy bone-storming Mommy and the mood dies like a... Wow, that's too dark even for me. I know! Kate tries to discuss boundaries. When grown-ups love each other very, very much... I know. They fuck. <laughs> the things kids pick up from BH1. Ooh, I've seen that look on Dexter. This kid's in danger. I love how this playhouse is suddenly so intense and ominous. When I was a kid, playgrounds weren't safe. Metal, concrete, sometimes on fire. But we didn't complain. Jason, no! I mean, Esther, no! You pushed her. That's not true. We were just playing. We were playing Tanya Harding. Max is her wingman. But Daniel is not a fan. Maybe you should send her back to the retard camp where she belongs. Apologize to your sister. She's not my fucking sister. As a punishment, he's locked in his treehouse? That is horrible. Okay, he's locked out of it. Okay, that's no big deal. You stay in your room with the Xbox and internet until you say you're sorry. Great, you're still alive. What? What? Trouble in paradise. You can't get jealous of every woman that I talk to. 
right? It's been like 10 years. What does that mean? It's been 10 years. You say- Stop it. You're making Sai sad. I'm afraid I may have made a mistake. Turns out Esther has a troubling history. She was there when Epstein died. And don't get me started on 9-11. Kate is getting suspicious of Esther, but John defends her. Kids, always getting into trouble. Esther, being Russian, knows some Russian games they can play. No time. Sister Redshirt is leaving. To get her to stop, Esther literally throws Max under the bus. <laughs> oh good, you're okay. Please don't tell your parents. Stop! Have a time! Killed a nun. Killed a nun. There's nothing in the book about that. It's okay. She's not dead yet. Oh, now she's dead. Max is an accessory, and Esther blackmails her into keeping quiet, which granted isn't hard. Feeling too good about yourself? Try therapy. Perhaps it's your guilt about drinking or what happened to Max. I don't feel inadequate. Yeah, you kind of do. Hello. Hello, is this Mrs. Coleman? Okay, I'm sorry to bother you, but I really need to know if Sister Abigail made a tour appointment with you. Do you have any clue where she is? None. You have to be insane or high to appreciate her art. Mama Googles, now she's an expert. Hmm, vaccinations are optional now. Why does everyone around here get the benefit of the doubt from you except for me? He's got trust issues based on past events, so she's having a hard time selling the evil child theory. Esther, Power Play 101. Pick flowers from Shrine of Dead Child. We call this an overreaction. No harm done. We'll see to that. Too bad flowers don't, you know, grow back. After these messages, uh, we'll be right back. Tattoos are so overrated. Fractures are the new thing. This leads John to believe Kate broke Esther's arm, and he puts her in the doghouse. Maybe you should sleep downstairs. Man, mommy is this close to drinking again, but she backs off still remembering to recycle. Esther, Power Play 102. Parking brakes are for losers. Max! No! 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 This, of course, makes Kate look bad, and this isn't helping either. But you have to believe me. I don't. The nominees for the world's least supporting husband? <clears throat> O.J. Simpson. Klaus von Bülow. Tiger Woods, Newt Gingrich, Sean Penn, and this guy. And the award goes to this guy. But you have to believe me. I don't. Dick. Daniel does some investigating. I have ways of making you talk. Sorry. This could be a way to build a case against Esther, but as usual, she steps ahead. And Kate is seemingly helpless to retaliate without anyone else in her corner. You should have asked for the kid facts. Kate looks for anything that might help. She finds Esther's Bible with a clue. Turns out it's from a mental hospital. This just gets better and better. Meanwhile, Daniel breaks and enters his own treehouse to get whatever Esther hid in there. In true treehouse of horror fashion, Esther traps Daniel with a bunch of incriminating evidence, then introduces Esther Power Play 103. Burn the evidence and the firstborn. Oh, the things that happen under Kate's watch. She's gonna be lucky with the goldfish after this. Shh. Just gonna rock you to sleep. Say your prayers. <laughs> Move away! Move away from the fire! He's vaping up there. We saw him. There's no way of knowing for sure what he'll remember until he wakes up. Can I have a dollar for the soda machine? Just watch how manipulative this girl can be. Uh, your mother wants you to stay right there. Ooh, so diabolical. Where were we? Oh yeah, you're a witness and you're still breathing. Nice little touch here. Esther is wearing his pulse monitor to avoid alarms, but as she's trying to kill Jacob, her own pulse does not elevate. That's a sociopath. Oh shit, they went there. If you have to be smothered, do it at a hospital where you can be resuscitated until the insurance runs out. Kate still goes sick house on Esther. This earns her a nice mandated rest at the hospital, leaving John at home with the kids. I know how sleeping works, old man. 
The only adult in the house who gave his wife shit when he thought she was drinking, starts drinking. Hypocrite much? And he's supposed to be the responsible one. Esther prepares to show that she really is all that. Dude, just how much did you drink? Things get really, really uncomfortable. I love you, Daddy. You too. What are you doing? What are you doing? How are you doing that thing with your face? You know, I don't love you like that. She already calls you daddy. Ow! I'm so confused. I think I saw Chris Hansen in the corner. He wants me to have a seat. This seems to be her end game. Get mom out of the way, become the new mom. Profit. But her charms fall flat. Thank goodness for Whiskey Dick. Before you get too uncomfortable, Kate gets the truth. Esther is not nine, she's 33. Born with a disorder that makes her look perpetually young. Like Keanu, or Keanu. Not only that, she's dangerous with a dangerous, violent pattern. Then she burned the house down. Where did she get all this UV paint? Mama races home. Esther stalks Daddy. And Esther stabs Daddy. A lot. Oh Christ, another witness. Kate makes it home. To save time, she parks in the den. I think there's an I told you so coming. I told you so. Now Kate is on the run because Esther has a gun. Kate finds Max in the greenhouse. What? Can you sign louder? Hang loose? What? <laughs> Too late, Anakin. She's got the high ground. <laughs> I'm okay. This bitch broke my fall. The laws of horror movie villains dictate that it's not yet over. <laughs> a climactic battle on a frozen pond. Max luckily has Stormtrooper aim, but it's effective nonetheless. <laughs> Knives aren't a match for a well-placed elbow. Please, don't let me die, mommy. I'm not your fucking mommy! <laughs> we also would have accepted, um, get off my plane and I've got enough friends. Good luck getting a sequel. Let me guess, she's got a sister. We found this empty wine bottle and we're all judging you. That was Orphan. The family dynamic, the friction, the fractured nature of their relationships make them especially vulnerable to Esther's manipulations. John's immediate distrust of Kate's suspicions are especially troubling when you see how it isolates her from everyone in her family. They started a lovey-dovey perfect family, but when things get dodgy, he can't wait to bring up her mistakes. This doesn't make him very likable. He throws Kate's past mistakes in her face, he ignores her pleas, and is very dismissive of her. Then he dies. I think there's a connection. He's kind of an idiot, and that takes away from his character. Esther being so advanced makes sense after the reveal. It's no longer a child being too worldly for her age, but rather an adult doing adult things, but also insane. But it's still kind of silly on paper. Esther might seem like the stuff of fiction, like Baby Herman, Three kids in a trench coat or little man? This can't happen in real life, can it? Okay, but this still makes the concept unintentionally funny when cartoons do it all the time. Isabel Furman's performance is chilling. Even when she's sweet, you feel there's something wrong, something off about her. She's a child playing an adult playing a child. She switches from doe-eyed victim to predator on a dime and it's fantastic. Her manipulations are so simplistic, so basic, the oldest tricks in the book, and they work on everyone. With everyone on their own page, it's no wonder Esther is able to decimate this family so easily. Unity, people! <laughs> the story is familiar, a tad predictable, I feel like I've seen this before. I only wish the characters themselves were written a bit stronger, less dense, less victim-y. Orphan is three and a half Bs. Killer children are strangely frightening. Killer adults are nothing new, but killer adults who pretend to be kids is batshit insane when it's not a cartoon. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment the bell, you know your usual YouTube stuff. This is the newbie, and I'll see you later, kids. Toodles!